Hi everyone and welcome to Google BigQuery in 10 minutes where I am going to show you how to use Google BigQuery for something serious and useful uh, in just 10 minutes. It's actually not that difficult to use. This is part of the ThoughtWorks 100 Days of Data. If you're with ThoughtWorks, please check out our My ThoughtWorks group. And uh, if you're not with ThoughtWorks, we'll tell you a little bit more about the company at the end. This is an initiative to get more people interested in using uh, data analytics, big data, all of those kinds of tools. So Google BigQuery is a new service from Google which allows you to use the power of the Google Cloud to analyze your data. And the, the interesting thing about this is that it allows you to do ad hoc, uh, basically random queries against terabytes of data using uh, thousands of servers uh, at the, at, in seconds. This is something that you couldn't do yourself uh, unless you bought a, a large amount of hardware to run it. So there's a serious cost, um, a cost implication here, and it, it generally makes big data processing much more accessible. So Google BigQuery allows you to do some stuff for free, uh, and basically there's a whole bunch of uh, instructions on the site about how you sign up um, for Google BigQuery. Basically, I'm using my personal uh, Google account. That seems to work a lot better than a corporate account uh, for trying this stuff. Your mileage may vary. So I, first of all, log into the uh, Google API console, uh, which you may not have seen before. And this allows you to switch on various services. So uh, on this page, you can actually see that I've got BigQuery and Google Cloud Storage enabled. Uh, to enable those, if you don't have them, you go down to the Services tab here, find the BigQuery API, and click the status so that it's on. Uh, and then if you are going to do cloud storage stuff, if you want to load data sets from cloud storage, uh, then there's the Google Cloud Storage here. You can upload smaller data sets directly through the browser, so you don't necessarily need that. The other thing you will need to do is enable billing. So uh, on here, um, I just clicked Google Wallet and it offered to let me use a credit card to, to sign up for billing. So far, um, I've been playing around for a while and haven't actually incurred any charges. There's a, there's a certain amount of free, uh, free uh, storage and uh, Google BigQuery processing that you can get. So you can see that I've got a five gig free plan and I actually haven't gone over that so far. So once you've enabled both of those, you can go into um, the Google BigQuery um, query tool. Now in here, uh, there's a tutorial and all sorts of other things that you can look at, but they also have these public um, data samples, which are kind of interesting data sets that you could start playing with. And this one is the GitHub timeline. So this presumably is all of the stuff that has ever happened on GitHub. So we can query the table um, and maybe do something do something interesting. So let's, uh, let's figure out how big the table is. So I go count one from, uh, from that, I don't need a limit. Count one will tell me how big this table is. And you can see that that is 6.2 million rows. Okay. Um, what else? Let's go back to, uh, let's go back to the, uh, what the table looks like. We've got a thing in here called actor, which I presume is the, the person doing, uh, doing the action. So if we say count one as num actions and then actor from uh, that particular data set, and we go group by uh, actor, so we're actually finding out who's doing the most, and then order by num actions descending, and I run that, we can see who's the most active person on the GitHub timeline. And so that took, took seven seconds to process 60 megabytes of data, and we find out that Eclipse apparently is the is the, is the most frequent actor by a long shot, so I would expect that that's some kind of automated system, um, or everybody on the Eclipse project is using a single login. Uh, there's some other things in here, t bon for HCI Lab, you can kind of scroll through and see who's using GitHub the most. Okay, so that's interesting, but that's not really super impactful, so why don't we look at some publicly available data sets that might tell us something more interesting. One of the places that you can get data from is data.gov. So this is open US government data sets. There are a number of other 
countries around the world that are providing this kind of thing, uh, as well as some NGO organizations, uh, the UN, uh, UNICEF, places like that. So in here, you can go to raw data. They have an interactive browser as well, but we're going to be interested in the raw data. I was browsing this yesterday, and I found some, uh, some interesting stuff that if I type in September, I get uh, a whole bunch of data sets, uh, these FedScope employment cubes. So this is federal employment data uh, going back uh, 10 or 11 years. So it goes back to 1998. And what you can do, you can, you can pick these. Uh, they're at the same time every year. And what I thought was interesting about this was it included um, where you're working, the occupation, but also salary and gender. So something that, that most people, uh, is, is something that is a true statistic is that men are paid more than women. And so there's a, there's a question about, in, in my mind, about whether that diversity gap is growing or whether it's, whether it's getting better. That, uh, that's an interesting question to ask. Maybe this data will allow us to uh, confirm or deny that. And you can click on these links and you get um, CSV downloads, uh, zipped CSV. Um, uh, actually, I found out they, they weren't CSV after I'd gone to the trouble of downloading all of them. Um, but if, if I have a quick look, this is, this is basically what I downloaded. So I downloaded several years worth of, of, of the data. And then if I look at an individual file, uh, fact data September 1998, if I look at this file, you can see that it's in a fairly nasty fixed width um, format. So the first thing that I did was to uh, figure out what that format is. Um, there's some files in the data dictionary that, that downloaded with this. And if I open one of those, data dictionary FS deployment, uh, I can open up the documentation. And uh, actually, I was looking at this earlier. Halfway through the documentation, it actually tells you what this text file really is. And you can see that these are the data elements. This is the fixed length format for them. Uh, and even there's, there's 1.8 million records in this particular file. So what I did was I hacked together a Perl script that um, opens up each of the individual years worth of data, uh, unpacks each row using um, the, uh, the fixed width format, and prints that back out into CSV. Because Google BigQuery uses uh, CSV is one of the inputs. Uh, you can also use JSON data, uh, but it doesn't appear to do fixed width uh, files right now, so you have to convert those. So that's what this file, this um, Perl script is doing. I actually found that the majority of the time getting started with uh, Google BigQuery was finding some useful or interesting data and getting it into a format that was ready to be uploaded. So if I uh, flip back here and I look at what I ended up with, I ended up with this fact data all CSV file, um, which is actually uh, pretty big. So that's one and a half gigs of uh, CSV data. And um, I can even say how many, how many lines are in that. Um, this will give us a, a, a record count. Sorry, laptop. Chewing through a one and a half gig file to, to figure out how long it is. And that looks like 22 million rows in that particular table. So what I can do, um, I've actually used, I've used Google Cloud Storage for this. If you want to put more than 10 megabytes of data, uh, compressed or uncompressed. If you want to put more than 10 megabytes into Google BigQuery, you need to use cloud storage, Google Cloud Storage for that. Um, I've got a bucket called MikeMason.ca, which is my personal domain. And if I look inside that bucket, you can see that I've got these two files in there, the, the all and the, and the sample. I did a 1% sample to try this stuff out earlier. So I've got um, my data in Google Cloud Storage. So next, I can come into the Google BigQuery um, Query Composer and actually add a new data set. Um, so this was the FedScope uh, data. So I'm going to call it FedScope. Um, and so here you can see, look, hey, I've got a new data set. And I can create a new table. So I'm going to create a table called Employment. Um, 
it's a CSV file. I'm going to get it from cloud storage. I go back and figure out what my cloud storage URL is. It's that. Okay. So that's my cloud storage. Um, the schema. So the schema uh, basically tells BigQuery what all the uh, what all the columns are in your particular data. And um, I pulled this together earlier. So it's actually quite simple. There's only there's only strings, floats, and integers, uh, and you basically use this colon separated uh, format syntax to describe uh, what is what is in your table. So um, I've got a fair few columns in there, and basically this allows it to to load it load it in. And I actually have I have one header row in there, um, which I'm going to skip, and then I can submit that. And so basically, what it's going to, what you're going to see on the screen here is that you are, it, it's loading this employment table. And in my job history, we can see that um, one, uh, one, one job is running. If I click on that, we can see that it's, it's still going, and um, the job is to load my Google Cloud Storage uh, fact data all into this employment table. That's going to take a little while. And so I'm going to break the video now and come back once this has completed loading. Okay, so that data load completed uh, took about 45 minutes, and we now have an employment table which was loaded from the CSV files. And um, so here's the schema for that table, which is uh, what we're expecting. So this is all the same stuff as was in the FixWit files. Now I can query the table and do our usual little count one so that we can see how many records are in there. Should be 22 million. Yep, that's, uh, that's about right, 22 million records. So our hypothesis we'd, uh, we'd, we'd like to test is uh, whether men are being paid more than women within this uh, federal government data set. Uh, so again, if we go back to uh, what, the, what the data looks like, the thing that we really care about is um, gender and average salary. So uh, what we're going to do is uh, we can uh, we can use some averaging functions. So we can average the average salary. Um, select average, average salary, uh, and gender, and um, maybe the let's just do that for now. Um, and we want to group by gender. Uh, just to see whether over the 10 years there's a salary difference between men and women. And yep, there we go. So we've got F, M, and Z. So uh, Z actually, I, I, I'm not sure what that is, whether that's a decline to specify or something like that. So I actually want to start um, ditching that from this particular data set. But you can see with, with uh, men over the, over the full uh, decade's worth of data, uh, certainly are being paid on average more than women, uh, and we can actually pull that up by uh, year as well. So if we go sample um, year, we're grouping by gender and sample year, and uh, we probably want to order by um, sample year and then gender. I guess the grouping doesn't matter which way around we do that. Uh, you can see that. Um, there is, there continues to be a disparity no matter which year we actually look at it. I'm going to get rid of these Zs now because um, I'm not, I'm not inter I, don't, I don't know what the Z really means, I'm not interested in that. So gender contains um, M or gender contains F. Let's run that. Again, this is ad hoc querying across 400 megs of data. You can do this on an awful lot more data. It's running against the, the Google Cloud. So there we've got men and women over the years. Um, we could divide those two numbers together and actually make a ratio um, and then uh, see how that changes over the years. So if we change that to uh, salary rather than F0 underscore, um, I'm going to do a nested select here. So what I, what I actually want to do is um, all the way through this data, men are being paid more than women. So what I can do is say um, uh, select max of salary as male, and 
the min of salary, and these aren't the actual minimum salaries, this is the minimum aggregated salary, the minimum average salary, um, as female, um, and I also care about sample year. Um, I'm selecting that from this guy, which is a big nested subselect. Um, I close my bracket there, and I want to do a group by uh, sample year and order by sample. So not much fun you watching me type SQL, but there we go. Um, so that's giving us the male and female numbers, uh, one row for each year, and then I can divide those together um, and uh, make a ratio. So I can go um, grab these two ratio. If I divide max by min. I should get a ratio for each year, and our hypothesis is hopefully the gender gap has been decreasing over the years. And in fact, when we look at the data, you can see that 1.24, 1.23, these numbers are decreasing, and they're slowly getting closer and closer together, and by 2009, the gap has narrowed. Not particularly fantastic data analysis, um, but you can see how you can use Google BigQuery to really um, delve into a realistic data set and, and actually prove or disprove some hypotheses. So thanks very much for watching. This has been part of the ThoughtWorks 100 Days of Data. Uh, if you are not part of ThoughtWorks and uh, this stuff interests you, maybe you should join us. You can visit join.thoughtworks.com um, to find out more. Uh, thank you very much uh, for watching this video.